Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. It's a Wednesday, it's 6 a.m. as we're doing this live, and whenever you're catching it, maybe a little bit later in the day or later in your morning, so glad to have you here as we are intentional in our relationship with God. We're starting the day with Him. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been studying the book of Matthew and uh, looking at Matthew, one of Jesus' uh, disciples, his closest followers, his firsthand account of his life, and looking at it through the lens that Jesus is fulfilling all the prophecies that had been predicted about the coming Messiah, the coming Savior. Uh, Matthew's just trying to make the point to the Jewish reader in particular uh, that Jesus is the one they've been waiting for. Now, just because he has the Jewish reader in mind doesn't mean that anyone can't pick up the book of Matthew and see who Jesus was and what he claimed to be and the miracles and signs and wonders and all of these things point to Jesus uh, being our Savior. Uh, but there's this specific thing, this specific audience in mind uh, as we walk through this. And, and today we're going to look at a miracle that Jesus did. And it once again, it shows all of the, the miracles that the Holy Spirit inspires Matthew to record in his gospel account uh, are to show a different side of Jesus. Once again, it's not a historical account. It's not saying in the sense of these are every single miracle Jesus did. He went from here to here to here and like a biography, a historical account, a diary, a journal. No, selected uh, events from the life of Jesus to paint a picture and to demonstrate who Jesus was. So today we're going to read the uh, account of Jesus feeding the 5,000, an amazing miracle that took place. Now this is one of those uh, miracles that is recorded in all four gospel accounts, which means it's very, uh, to the very, early believers, this was a critical moment in Jesus' ministry. It was, it was very memorable. It involved a lot of people because there are so many people present at this miracle. Um, I mean, you think about this, there would have been a lot of people milling around, walking around uh, that were maybe not initial followers of Jesus, but like, oh, I was there. <laughs> I was there that day, kind of like Woodstock kind of was with the last generation. Like, ah, I was at Woodstock. There was, you know, a million people that claimed to be at Woodstock, but not quite that many people there. I would imagine this miracle, there were tens of thousands of people there, but they were probably within the first, you know, couple decades after the resurrection, probably millions of people saying, oh yeah, I was there, or they knew someone that was there for sure, because it was so, so widespread. Anyways, well, let's jump into it. It says this, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left, oh, what news? John the Baptist has died. Uh, he's died at the hands of Herod. Uh, he has uh, been beheaded. So John the Baptist, Jesus is, uh, close associate, his cousin, there's a relationship there, he's dead. So now he's going, going away to grieve. It says, as soon as he heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed him on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. So that's a key phrase, he had, he had compassion on them. Uh, that Jesus loved the people, he saw them as his own. Uh, as a Jewish reader was reading this, they would have thought of maybe of, of Moses, of, of caring for the people, being responsible for them. That's kind of the figure that they would have attached to Jesus in, in this moment. That evening, so after a whole day of, of having compassion, healing, probably a little bit of teaching mixed in there, some uh, stories, he's telling parables, all, all these things we could imagine him doing with this huge crowd. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, this isn't necessary, you feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Now in another one of the gospel accounts, it tells us where they got those five loaves and two fish. It was, it was a young boy who offered them up, uh, who gave the disciples this food and uh, not knowing what was gonna happen. Maybe he just thought, hey, I'll at least give up my meal so Jesus can have something to eat, but place this food in, in Jesus's hands. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. So 5,000 men plus women, children, 15,000 
maybe 20,000 people there that day. So that's a lot of people telling this story. Now, we don't know exactly their reaction, doesn't record you know, what the people, how they responded to, to being fed. Uh, but the fact that you can look around on a, on a crowd this big and see everyone getting food is a pretty amazing miracle. I wanna look, just kind of zoom in on some, some verbs here. Uh, how Jesus went about doing this miracle. Because what Matthew is doing here is he is giving us a preview to Jesus's ultimate ministry of compassion. So in this moment, Jesus is taking care of the people. He loves them, he has compassion on them. He's taking care of their, their need for, for bread, to, to eat, to, to live. It says he took the, he took the bread, um, he took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up towards heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread. He took, he blessed, he broke, he gave. Now, pretty normal verbs when you think about what Jesus, like the mechanics of what's taking place here. But if we flip forward in Matthew, all the way to Matthew chapter 26, we find Jesus with his disciples at the Last Supper. And it says this, it says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for it is my body. Now, is it a coincidence there that, that Matthew uses the same exact verbs in the same exact order uh, in the last supper and in this huge supper feast for all the people? No, Matthew's making a, a connection between these two things. That the Jesus who is compassionate and cares about the people's needs is also the Jesus who is com compassionate and cares about our ultimate needs. Not for food that will sustain us through the day, but for food that will sustain us for eternal life. The, the bread that he gave and multiplied out for the crowds, that is now his body that he's giving out for the multitudes, for all of mankind so that we can live forever, not just for a day, but for eternity. When we look at Matthew as a whole, when we look at these gospel accounts and kind of are able to back up a little bit and see some of the things that we're, we are taking place here, we begin to see the, the depth at which the, the Holy Spirit inspired Matthew to write this. That once again, this is not just a, uh, a journal of all the events of Jesus' life, it's communicating a story that God, who loves us, who has compassion for us, who cares about our daily needs, also cares about our eternal needs. And that he took this bread, he took it, he broke it, he blessed it, he gave it. And then ultimately his body was taken, was blessed, was broken and given for us. What a great reminder of how much Jesus loves us today. What a great reminder of the Savior that is walking with us today, wherever you're headed, whatever you have going on. Jesus loves you. He has compassion for you. He cares about today, about your needs for today, but he cares about your, your eternal needs and desire for a relationship with him that, that goes on forever, and he made that possible. All of that, all of that because of Jesus. But what a great reason to worship and celebrate him today. God, we, we do that this morning as we start our day. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your provision. God, your provision of our daily needs, but ultimately your provision of our forgiveness, of our uh, eternity with you. God, may we, when we accept the provision of today, may, may it remind us of our provision forever. May we connect these things together. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. And uh, I look forward to, to hanging out with you again tomorrow morning, 24 hours from now, on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.